Welcome to a new daily top ask credit video. Today's topic. What's hard about dating you? I create delusional scenarios in my mind. When a girl I'm crushing on sends a mixed signal for 0.05 seconds I figure she hates me already. Take a page from my book, just assume she's not into you and it's a non-starter from the get-go, i.e. Self-reject before even making contact. When I have a bad day I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't want to be helped either. I just want to exist in silence for a while. My GF just shares with me her frustrations and I just listen now. I used to try to help her fix things cause I hated seeing her miserable. Now I just let her vent and then I just hug her and we sit there or lay down for a bit until she's better or I offer her a snack. This is the secret of a happy relationship. Listen, and don't offer advice unless asked. Half the time, just stating the problem out loud and being heard can do a lot. Sometimes I need extended periods alone. I once knew this dude. One day, out of nowhere, I just asked him how it's been going with his girlfriend. He smiled a bit, and then with a very confident sort of energy, told me that he just decided to have some distance with her for a while. Told me that doing that is helping him stabilize, being calm and cheerful. I was happy for him. Out of nowhere, and for the sake of just continuing the conversation I asked him, how long has it been since you guys have talked? His answer, and I'm not lying, was, 10 months. I had so many follow-up questions but I just ended up with, let's have some Coca-Cola. The correct response should have been, motherfucker, that's called a breakup. I get really clingy when I fall in love. I know it and I should tone it down but for some reason I have to force myself a lot to do so. Dude same. My poor husband. I just wanna be next to him all the time no matter what we're doing. I want to hear every thought of his as it happens. I want to wear his shirt while he's wearing his shirt. Tears of joy I just want him. He doesn't hate it but he also doesn't love it so I guess a win is a win. Any chance you have a sister, I'm joking but desperately lonely. I'm terrible at opening up and communicating about my needs. Same. I wasn't allowed to have needs for a large portion of my life so now it's almost impossible to communicate them. How have you guys been working on fixing this? I feel like I'm in the same boat. I don't talk when I'm angry. I always need some time before I can open up what's my problem. I think as long as you say something like, can we discuss this in an hour, or any X amount of time? Then it should hopefully be fine smiley face. I think where a lot of people make the mistake is saying they don't want to talk about it right now, but never suggesting when they will want to talk about it. If my partner is mad and doesn't want to talk like okay fine but I don't want to have to keep bugging him to talk when I have no idea when he will be ready to. Yes this is exactly it. I have dated people like that before that need time when they're mad. Okay, understandable. But at some point, there needs to be a conversation. I have dated someone that will just never bring it up again, so I started just trying to have the conversation right away, or bring it up later, and they get mad and say they need time. It's like, no, you just don't want to communicate then lol. Nothing wrong with taking space if you're actually taking it to get a more level head and not to just avoid a hard conversation. My anxiety. Yep, yeah, could be as simple as being anxious in a crowd to deluding myself into throwing all trust I have for you down the drain because you smiled at a guy at work lol. Or the constant inner feeling that everything you touch ends up breaking, or everyone you care for will eventually get tired of you. Pretty much guarantees both happens anyway because you've willed it into existence. I enjoy my time alone very much. Highly recommend separate bedrooms for a person like this. I need my alone time and just having my own bedroom to sleep in alone helped relieve this tension I was feeling so much. Plus it's amazing for your sleep. This. I love cuddling and physical touch, but I need to sleep on my own. Dealing with my low self-esteem. Same here too, I never think I am good enough. And then, I somehow screw it up because I go too far with overcompensating. I am blind, and most guys are not used to being a service animal in human form. It's not every day that one has to verbally describe everything to their date and put their hand on stuff. The other thing is my ultra-conservative, religious and narcissistic Asian parents. That last part, I'm so sorry. Yeah, nobody wants to deal with that bullshit. Are you Asian as well? Maybe look for ADHD folks. Endless narration and I get to touch stuff. Sounds like something up my alley. Being able to ramble on about something. Looks like a job for me. My wife. She would make us both disappear lol. Yep, soon as I start dating someone I'm sure my wife is going to have opinions about it. And I'm going to have to hear them. Not worth it I'm a. I agree. It's a real killjoy when it comes to dating. I'm super clingy, and have trust issues. That anxious, avoidant attachment style wahoo. 
trying to figure out how to change that currently. This isn't sustainable. Always taking everything so personally and terrified I'm going to be dropped like a hot potato at any moment. My trust issues are so bad, I feel like everyone is lying. My first therapy session is today, I hope I can restore my faith in people again. I am too comfortable being single that I find it hard to force myself to compromise. This is basically what I was going to write about me. I've been single and comfortable being single long enough that it's hard to give up that piece, to even want to date long enough to figure out compatibility. To my credit, I still put myself out there to date. But I always fall into the same trap, it gets to the point where I have to cancel or defer something, or put up with disagreements, arguments and I inevitably fall back to, this isn't worth it, and just break up. Right or wrong, I feel they don't have enough leverage over me in the idea that I can just do whatever I want otherwise. Instead, I have a FWB. That seems to work. I get on my own nerves I can't imagine I would not bother a partner lol. But really I can be moody especially if I am stressed or overstimulated. Same with the own nerves part. The thing is, I know I'm boring. Midway through most of my own stories, I realize that if I heard it from someone else it'd be falling asleep and I end up pissing myself off. But I found a girl who listens to my boring ass stories and genuinely likes talking to me. There is someone out there that'll love your idiosyncrasies. I like to deal with all things head on. I refuse to linger. 100% me. I am the hammer and everything is a nail. I cannot allow any issues to go unresolved because I can't sleep at night. Literally can't fall asleep if the problem hasn't been addressed. This is especially true in romantic relationships. I am the hammer and everything is a nail. I like the way you put that. I argue with myself let alone another human. I take forever rrrr to get ready I don't leave home a lot so I like to look pretty when I do lol. Your reply is much a breath of fresh air amidst all the gloomy stuff. Terrible at messaging. Snap, in person, generally fine. Tend to get people laughing, easy to get questions going and people talking about themselves. In text, absolutely awful. Dry as shit and I find negotiating to find the common ground hard as shit. I add a lot of black pepper to everything I make cool. If you don't mind tons of garlic on everything we are a match. Meeting me lol. I'm too comfortable being alone and don't go, out. I run errands, will go to movies, museums, etc. by myself or sometimes with friends but most of the time you ain't gonna catch me outside. Removed. Removed. Damn the laundry thing made me laugh. I am probably neurodivergent, cannot regulate emotions very well. I am autistic, when I was diagnosed, it was Asperger's, and girls have never cared. Growing up I was so sure they would, but I'm 33 now and not a single girl has cared at all. Are you fit, attractive and well employed? I don't argue, don't raise my voice. Listen and let my SO say all the mean things in the book and then build resentment. I'm a literal vibrating ball of energy all the time. I feel this. I am a lot. Mostly my mood is pretty good, but sometimes I am so cheerful that even I find it annoying. I just can't stop though. I also hate sharing my space and am messy AF. This entire thread has just become therapy for everyone lol. Mark of a great thread, bringing about this sort of introspection is ask Reddit at its finest. I struggle with victim mentality and often shut down during emotional conflict. It takes a lot of self-awareness to recognize this in yourself, that's a vital first step. I wish you well stranger heart. Your recognizing it is incredible. Most do not. I self-sabotage as a result of past relationships and insecurity in believing I'm not good enough for my partner, and undeserving of healthy, gentle love. I often find myself thinking I should break things off before I ruin it, before I get hurt, or before they break it off with me, very avoidant. However, I am working really hard on this, and it hasn't affected my current relationship so far. I've been to lots of therapy over the years, and I frequently journal. I try to catch my anxious thoughts before they develop. I don't tolerate much bullshit or drama, I'd rather be alone in peace than have to deal with what I see so many of my peers enduring because they are shackled by choices they made and responsibilities they took on. Deleted. I hate associating with someone's family. I don't love myself yet. Yet. I love that you said yet. Keep going. Keep working on yourself. I flirt subconsciously with a lot of people. Do you mean you think you have an actual normal conversation but it turns out that you're being very flirty and you don't understand when people flirt back? Basically yes. I have been told that I flirt with people all the time. I don't see it. I don't think complimenting someone when they look nice is flirting. 
I don't think letting someone know that they're cared for and appreciated is flirting. I don't think a hug is flirting. I grew up in an environment where those things were never seen or said and I go out of my way to make people know that I care about and appreciate them. I give people compliments. I give hugs. I know what it's like to be starved for any kind of affection and I show affection to others. I don't think it's flirting at all. Apparently I'm one of the few that think that way. But if they see it and we don't it still leads to problems. I think the delivery of the affection is important. All that can be done without it seeming like flirting and if it's being perceived as so, it could be a sign to change your delivery. What's subconscious flirting? Please elaborate. I assume they mean that they're friendly and like to joke with people, and some people take it as flirting, but they are not doing it with intent. I will he interacting with friends, strangers, and without knowing or actively trying to ill fall into flirting. Getting too close, laughing freely, innocent physical contact. 